Hey there, it's Tan from Asian Efficiency. In this video, I want to show you the new OmniFocus 2 for Mac. So if you've been using OmniFocus 1 and you're wondering if you should upgrade or not, this video is for you. Also, if you just upgraded to OmniFocus 2 and you're trying to figure out how it works, uh, this video is for you as well, as I'm about to show you how it works, what you can do with it, what you cannot do with it, and more. And if you're an OmniFocus Premium Post customer, you're going to love this video because I'm going to show you and give you some of my thoughts on uh, what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Okay, so let's get started with OmniFocus 2 for Mac. Okay, so I have OmniFocus 2 open here. So if you came from OmniFocus 1, this looks a little bit different, right? It looks a little bit modern, looks a little more slick, and reminds you of OmniFocus 2 on iOS 7. So if you've been using OmniFocus 2 on the iPhone, then this looks very familiar. Now, um, you'll notice that the navigation is on the left, right? So you have inbox, project, context, forecast, flagged, and review. And then you have the toolbar at the top. So I've already customized mine. So it looks a little bit different than the default one. And then here you have the inspector. So if you select something, then you see all the properties and, and fields there. And you can sort of hide that by just clicking on that. So let's just uh, start here for a moment. So what I like about this is that the inspector is not a floating window anymore. Like in the past, you know, my inspector would just like, you know, be all over the place and I could never find it. But now it's like slick and in one place. So you can do all the stuff that you can do in the past. The only difference or the two noticeable differences are the fur. So in the past, we used to have start dates, right? So now that is called the fur. Now, personally, I don't like this name change. Um, I'm more of a start guy. Like when I think of defer, I think of something as, oh, you know, I, I'm gonna put this off and it will appear some other time. Uh, when I think of start dates, I think of, okay, uh, I can't work on this right now, but I can work on this sometime later at this specific date. So I, I'm more of a start page, uh, start guy. Um, but, you know, some people like defer, you know, what can you do? The other thing is notes. So now it's really, really easy to add notes to this, um, to your task and items. So um, I know a lot of people are gonna like this. I know you probably like this. In the past, you had to click on this like tiny, tiny paperclip icon, but now you can just you know easily add notes in there. Or if you're a keyboard jockey like I am, just press command apostrophe and then off you go. Okay, the other thing I wanna bring up is the inbox. So the inbox looks a little bit different. Um, as you can see, it's it, it's a little bit simpler. And you know, one of the challenges OmniFocus One had was it was really overwhelming at times, right? So with this redesign, you know, I think one of the big uh, objectives was to not make it so overwhelming. So as you can see, there aren't like columns anymore. There aren't like filter options anymore. Um, it's just you know, there's a list of things in there and. Uh, it hides stuff from you. Like th that's one of the things you'll see in this design is that you don't see a lot of information unless you're, you know, s actually searching for it. So, for example, uh, this this funny quote that I captured uh, some other time, uh, you don't actually see, you know, any information uh, unless you hover over it, and then you can see how you can assign a project to it, and assign a context, and then defer, or maybe set a, a due date, or maybe flag it or uh, you know, do other stuff with the inspector or if you wanna hide that. So the design is really there to make it very easy, make it very accessible and not to overwhelm you, which I think is great because OmniFocus One had sort of a bad rap in terms of, yeah, it's really powerful, but it can be super, super overwhelming. So always be careful. And um, I think with this redesign, you know, it's, it's gonna be a lot easier for, for a lot more people to uh, use the program and not be overwhelmed. Okay, so let's go over the uh, left navigation. So you have projects here. And the first thing you'll notice is that the icons are a little bit different, right? So in the past you had like the library folder here, that's gone, it's it's a lot more flat now. Uh, in terms of icons, a single action list is like four dots. Uh, parallel projects like two lines and, and dots at the ends. And you have like sequential project, which is like three dots. And then you have something on hold, which is the universal pause icon. So it takes a little bit getting used to, but um, it's really not a big deal. Uh, going back to context, um, 
yeah, it's really the same thing, really. Nothing has changed there. It just looks a little different. Uh, forecast. So forecast is great. Um, I love the new forecast feature. Like if you've been using OmniFocus on iOS, you're already familiar with that. So I'm really glad it's finally on the desktop. And um, it really allows you to plan your days ahead. And I really like this. And it allows you to see what's coming up. Uh, so for example, I can see that you know, a couple days, there's Memorial Day, right? So I can sort of plan ahead that you know, I'm not gonna work that day and uh, I'm not gonna assign anything to do that day. So you, when you sync it up with your calendar, it's great. And I'm gonna show you in another video how to do all that stuff. Um, flagged, you, know, you can see stuff that is flagged. Currently, I don't have anything in a review. So in the past, reviewing used to be like a big no-no, right? Like you wouldn't review on OmniFocus One on the desktop. Like you would never do that. It was just too confusing. Like we would always, you know, do it on the iPad, right? And now that's changed. Like now you can actually do really cool reviews and it's very slick, it's very easy, and it's very convenient. And I actually really like this feature now. So I've been reviewing on the desktop quite a bit and I can say it's pretty, pretty cool. And uh, I would definitely recommend it. So stop doing it on your iPad, uh, go do it on your desktop for a couple of weeks and see how you like it. Um, I think you'll, you'll like it a lot actually. Now going back to the inbox, um, I wanna show you a couple things. So a lot of questions uh, come up when it comes to inbox processing, right? Now, a lot of people, want to be able to drag and drop things and that's not possible anymore like if i drag and drop this where does this go like oh no you can't well there's a workaround and i'm going to show you right now so uh, i have this app called moon that allows me to resize windows and i click on new window and then i have another window open here so what you can do now is if you want to do drag and dropping stuff what you do is you open projects in one window and then you have your inbox in the other and then you drag stuff in there so if I want this little quote to go somewhere, I can say Europe trip and then boom, it's right there. Doesn't make sense when I put it there, but it's there, right? So uh, let me put this back, Control Command Z. Okay, so you can do some you know, organizing that way and I know a lot of people miss that, but this is like a workaround for doing that. Now you can do a lot more cool things with drag and dropping, not just with projects, but also context. So if I wanna assign a context to this, I can just say, uh, let's say do, and then boom, you can see that it's do right there, right? Um, but the same thing with forecast. Let's say I want to say this is due uh, on, you know, the fourth. I can just drag it there to the fourth, and now boom, it's due on the fourth. So that allows you to, you know, plan a little bit. Um, it's a little bit of a workaround, and it's a little bit sneaky, but it works, and it, I think it's great. So. That's a little bit how you uh, can process your inbox more easily. And, uh, and I think a lot of you guys are gonna like this. So I know it's a little bit of a workaround, but you know, if, you, if you're a drag and dropper, you know, this is the way to do it. Okay, let's go a little bit uh, over the configuration settings. So um, it has changed quite a bit. It's actually, there are actually fewer things in here to change. So again, going back to the overwhelm thing, it's not as overwhelming anymore. It's really easy to get around. It's really easy to, to set things up. And one thing I want you to make sure is that you check this check checkbox. Make sure you check this because I'm gonna show you. So I don't have it checked right now. So let's say I'm in projects and um, let's say this is due today. So I'm gonna say today. Um, and you're gonna see the red icon, right? Now in the past, the default setting in OmniFocus One is that you had this red icon here that says one or two or three or whatever the count number is. Now it doesn't show that, which I kind of missed. So if you check this box, it will be right there, boom, right? And now you have it. So I really recommend you have that set up. Going back to the other things, um, everything is pretty much straightforward and um, there's no, really not much to say here. So, you know, just, just play around with that. Uh, I'm gonna move this back. Okay, cool. All right, so I showed you so far all this cool stuff, all the new features. Um, one thing I do want you to know is that OmniFocus 2 requires OS X Mavericks. So if you don't have that, you need 10.9 first. So the way to figure that out is go to this Apple icon 
about this Mac, and make sure you have 10.9. If you don't have that, you need to upgrade first. Right? So I know some of you people love Snow Leopard. You know, I used to love Snow Leopard as well, but boy, you gotta upgrade. Uh, mountain Lion, Line, same thing. 10.7, 10.8 cannot run OmniFocus 2. Okay, so make sure you update. The other thing to be aware of is that OmniFocus 2 comes in two flavors. So you have Standard and Pro. So Standard has everything you need, um, and I would rec recommend that for most people. But if you if you are someone who needs perspectives and you need to have custom perspectives, then you need the Pro Edition. Okay, so for most people, get the Standard. If you need custom perspectives, you need the Pro Edition. And if you're an OmniFocus Premium Plus customer, you definitely need the Pro Edition. Otherwise, you can't really be Asian efficient. Okay, so that's something to be aware of. Now, when it comes to perspectives, uh, let's go over that a little bit. Um, so the new one comes with default perspectives, and there, there's one uh, that is new called Change. So you can actually see the recently changed stuff, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, and when it comes to other perspectives, you know, one of the things that is missing here is in OmniFocus 1, you have this filtering bar, so you can really filter stuff. You have like columns, which is kind of like your old school design, I guess. Um, but now you don't see that anymore. So how do you make new perspectives? Well, you just go to show perspectives, you add a new one, uh, say blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, you go in here and you start filtering stuff. So um, this is really how you do it. And uh, it's a little bit hidden. And I think that's done on purpose because it wants to only cater to the, you know, the, the geeks, the, the Asian efficiency people who really want to customize and, and fiddle and, and tweak their little things. But for most people, perspectives is, is not something that they want to, you know, find out more about, right? Um, so I think, you know, it's, it's a good thing. You just have to be aware of that. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, and these are really the big changes in OmniFocus 2. Um, if you're hesitant about upgrading, what you can always do is download a trial. There's a 14 day trial that you can just like, you know, download, use, you know, play around with that. If you have it synced up through OmniSync, you have all the data there and you can sort of play around with that. Um, I, you know, I personally like this new version, so I've been using it for quite a bit. I love it. It's stable and I think it's great. I love it. I love it. Um, otherwise, you know, if you're a little bit old school, you don't like change, you know, OmniFocus 1 is still great, don't get me wrong. And, you know, you can do a lot of cool things with that. You know, if, you, if you are productive, and you don't need any change in your life, you know, continue to use OmniFocus 1. Uh, down the line, you can always upgrade later, right? So guys, I really hope you liked it. Um, let me know what you think of this video. Leave a comment behind and let me know if there's anything that I can do to help you out, okay? I have more videos coming up. Um, these are gonna be part of the new OmniFocus Premium Post. So if you wanna know more about tagging, calendar, how to use it with email, how to prioritize stuff, you know, definitely check out OmniFocus Premium Post. And I'm gonna show you videos on exactly how to do all that stuff. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.